All right, so today we're gonna to be doing the basic leg massage routine on the back of the legs. So we're gonna first start by demonstrating the drape here. Uh, now, if you use a lot, utilize a blanket, first thing is to just get the blanket out the way. And we're gonna grab the edge of the top sheet. And I find it just simple to fan fold the edge of the drape in. And I'm just gonna push that edge of the drape up to where I want the the drape to end up being, I'm gonna grab and pinch the edge of the drape right here about an inch below her knee. I'm gonna thread it through. I'm gonna keep this uh, pinch right here. I'm just gonna slide it up towards her hip. So that's giving us the nice complete uh, leg here. Uh, and we'll also be doing the glutes today. I forgot to mention that. So now, um, so we'll start with doing the leg routine first here. And you'll notice the, the big thing about the, the hamstrings is you want to pay attention to the topography. It, if, if you kind of look at it, and a, a, lot more, a lot of clients are more exemplified of this, you know, she's, she's actually pretty, uh, pretty even here, but a lot of times our clients' legs angle down, right? So it's, it's, it's like running uphill versus downhill which if you think about it, we have more resistance when we're running uphill than when we do downhill. Now I'll first like to start by gliding with my downstrokes from the edge of the drape towards the knee. The, the reason behind this is that it just, to me, puts it in my client's mind that this is, this is my, res my respect for you, this is my, you know, my concern for you. I'm starting from the edge of the drape. I work down. You know that I'm not going to go any higher. If I started from here and I slowly come up, it's like, where, where do I stop, right? So I just want to put my client's mind at ease. So we're just going to start with some palm glides. And as I come down the leg, I just let my hands split and go to the sides of the knee. Now I'm going to give my cameraman here a real run for his money because I'm going to be changing angles a lot. So like I said, in this case, we're going down the slope. So we're running downhill. We have very little resistance. So this is really good for me to apply my lotion. Over the, over the thigh. Now, as you can see, it's real easy because my palms actually stay very straight. It's very good on my wrists. This is going down the leg, down the hill, is usually the go-to method of the palm glides. Now, when I wanna come up the hill, I'm just gonna turn. And so I'm just gonna move her leg out to the side a little bit so I can get an easier angle with this. This is where I can get those fist glides. So now you can see there's more tissue bunching up And I can get a lot more pressure with this technique. Now, one technique I do like to do with my fist glides is I just like to make this kind of steamroll, this like steamroll. I'll take my thumb and I'll just grab my thumb and I just have this little steamroll, like rolling pin type thing going on here. I can glide up. And if I really want some extra pressure, I can get some forearm glides in there. And just gliding right on up. And make sure, I like to make sure I go straight to the ischial tuberosity, right there where those hamstrings attach to on the uh, pelvis there. So then I can turn. I'm just going to do this ocean wave technique across the legs, across the back of the thigh. Basically just like wringing it out. And I can take that muscle group, especially if it's really small, and just, just grab it and just kind of move it and just kind of like tear it, just like shingle it here. Can you see? Can you see what we got here? Just grabbing and, and tearing there. Now, of course, if my client's thighs are really big, I can't get that in there. Then I'm going to do this little push-pull technique right here in the inner thigh especially right here around the knee. I'm going to do this one hand petrissage around that pes anserineus insertion. And then I'll do this little palm pull hitting those adductors. Just keep my fingers curled and I'm just going to pull on those adductor muscles here. Then 
I can work onto the outside of the thigh into the IT band. Now what I like to do is I'll just roll the thigh a little bit and I can get low. I can just glide that fist right on up to that greater trochanter. And I got a nice low stance here. I could even hook my elbow into my hip to really get that good pressure and make this really easy for me. And then I'm just going to push, just like we pulled on the inner thigh, I'm gonna push that IT band up towards the back of the thigh. That's really gonna get a little bit of myofascial work here. So then I'm going to do this broadening um, petrissage here. I'm gonna start two hands back of the thigh. I'm just gonna let my hands slide down and then just pull them back up with a good squeeze. So then my body weight separate my hands and pull up. Now the hand on the inside of the thigh kind of has to taper off as I come up the thigh with this for obvious reasons. But I'll take this technique up and down the, the thigh. I can even do this fulling technique. We've demonstrated this before in the back routine. Need a little bit more lotion. Where I'm just taking my fist and just kind of palm spreading. Just basically doing this, kind of just, just separating my hands. Takes a little wrist effort, so I might not want to do this all the time. And then be very careful of the back of the knee. Don't put any pressure. Any pressure I go with the back of the knee is just like skin deep pressure. Just kind of flush it out here. My next technique would be to just do this like circular motion right around the knee itself. Basically the same type of technique we were just doing with the spread and just going right around the knee. Now <clears throat> it's up to you when you want to come into the the glutes i usually like to start with a warm-up on the um on the thigh here before i come into the glutes because i feel like just going straight to the glutes for my client is just especially if they're a new client you know you don't want to you, you got to ease them into some glute work so and then i always ask permission before i do so is it okay if we work in the glutes and she's fine with that so how do you drape the glutes well to make it smooth for you, when I do my glide up, I can just kind of scoop that drape and just push it. But if I need to, I can physically or manually do it. And I just need the side of the glute exposed. And voila. So now I need a little bit of lotion. And then I just basically glide and just, I have to change my angle. So I can carry my glide coming up, but you see I change my angle to be directly into those tissues. And I can do this too with my forearms and really get those forearms right around that greater trochanter. That's pretty much our focus is right around the greater trochanter. And I'll even come up as high of getting that edge of the sacrum. So with the edge of the sacrum in mind, I'm gonna do this shingling technique where I'm just doing this fist over fist. And I'm gonna start from the edge of the sacrum and I'm gonna pull down right there above the greater trochanter. Again, I can do my fulling technique and just kind of twist those uh, fists in there. Now, we are able to do some forms of petrissage. Petrissage is, of course, going to be a good on a big muscle group like this. Uh, but it, how, you, uh, how you apply it is important. Me, my personal preference is to do the two fist method. So I'm going to take my fist, I'm just going to squeeze squeeze the glute because if i try to do it with my fists my, my palms like this is like i'm grabbing her booty and I just, me personally i feel like that might be a little awkward my client so if i just take my fist it kind of just melds into with any of the other fist work i was doing so it's just real easy and i can just kind of strip around that greater trochanter you can find the um other muscles sometimes i'll even find those the uh gluteus medius and minus minimus right here and i'll just kind of roll the thigh in and out over it just get a little little motion in there i can even take her leg i'm going to cross her leg over just cross her ankle over which is going to put the medius and minimus 
in a nice little stretch and I can just kind of focus that out. So once I'm done with the glute, I'll put the drape down. And just real quick to show you that you don't actually have to undrape the glute to do a decent massage, because I can still, it just takes practice, I can still glide very well over the drape. You can see I got one hand here pinning it down that just keeps my sheet nice and taut, which makes it easier for me to glide. But then I can still do all of my same techniques, compressions, right? The, the, the petrissage. I can even hit a little of that fulling there. So you can still do tons of techniques through the drape if your client isn't comfortable with, um, with their glute being draped. And I'll always ask too if they're comfortable with that drape before I you know, proceed. So I'll then move from the glute down the leg and I'm coming into the calf here. And the calf is pretty much going to be resemblant of the thigh itself. So again, we still have our hill, right? So now our hill is this way. We're going down the hill. So I'd like to do my fist glides up, but if I get low enough, I can do nice, easy palm glides. That's fine. So fist glides are going to be good. Now, the only thing is the difference between the calf and the uh, hamstrings is the hamstrings can take a lot more pressure. I can't do as much pressure on the calves as I could the hamstrings. I could literally stand all of my body weight on her hamstrings and it probably wouldn't bother her. So I'm gonna do this alternating petrissage on the calves. Now normally we might not be able to do this on every single person's hamstrings just because of how big they are, but calves usually aren't too big to, to do this technique. Again, here's my ocean wave petrissage, just, 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 just wringing it out like a, like a nice little sponge. And then I can do my broadening technique that I was doing on the, on the thigh. And then I'm gonna do that inside petrissage, you know, get right there around the um, medial um, tuberosity of the tibia and just get that petrissage right in there. And then just like we did on the IT band, I can just kind of roll the lateral side of the calf muscles here. Now, when we're working the calf muscles, you got to remember what muscles are there. Obviously, our big bulky one on the, on the outside or more superficial is that gastrocnemius, which is the two belly muscle here. So if I kind of just strip right through in the center, you gotta be careful because there's a lot of vasculature here. I can hit into what's called the soleus, which is the muscle right underneath it. Another technique I can do, I like to do sometimes, especially for you know, runners and you know, people with plantar fasciitis, is just kind of just grab that, uh, that Achilles tendon, that calcaneal tendon here, and just, just give it a little, little motion, a little, little bend, a little twist here. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift her, bend her knee, and I can sit, you wanna come around the corner here, and I'm gonna sit on the edge of the table. Now, I usually suggest that if you're gonna be doing multiple clients in a day, have a stack of towels you can use, you know, one for obviously for every client, you know, don't make it gross and use the same towel for multiple clients, but I'll put that towel right here on my shoulder because I wanna kinda just rest her, um, her ankle right here that way I have a little bit of support and I can hit the, the calf here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this curl finger. I call it the, the, the heart, the love technique right here because I, I have my fingers curled like I'm making a heart, like I love you. And I'm just gonna take those fingers and I'm just gonna strip down this calf muscle. So I'm gonna come right here in the center and that's gonna get that soleus, especially since with the, the knee bent, it's actually going to soften up the gastric muscle and allows me to get deeper into the soleus muscle here. And I'm just gonna strip through the center. I'm gonna strip the outside. And honestly, I could just strip every cubic inch of her calf, especially if their calves are a big focus. They're gonna really like this technique. Then I wanna do praying hand petrissage. So I'm, like I'm praying here, I'm gonna interlace my fingers. I'm gonna squeeze, I'm gonna use my fingers to pull my the heels of my hand together and just going to squeeze this calf muscle here. 
Then I like to think that I'm in the Philharmonic Orchestra and I'm playing a, maybe a standing bass or a cello. And I like to do what I call the cello sweep here. And I'm just gonna take my forearms and I'm just gonna just slide, just like slice them, like I'm cutting across, using like a bow across the strings of a cello or a, you know, standing bass or whatever orchestra instrument you would prefer that requires a, uh, maybe a violin, right? A little smaller, but whatever. Then I can just straight up, boom, bring the knee or I bring the ankle and heel towards her, her glute. And that's going to stretch out her quads. Now she's definitely got some flexibility here. So she probably ain't feeling much of a stretch here with this technique because her, her heel is on her glutes and, you know, could definitely go a lot further. So <clears throat> I'll show you what we're going to do to deepen that stretch here in a second. But first I want to do a pin and stretch on the, um, on the hamstrings muscles itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press into those hamstrings and with this knee bent, that's gonna put the muscles into a passive contraction. Then I'm gonna just lengthen out that knee, which is going to stretch out the muscles underneath my pressure. I'm gonna loosen up my pressure, press in, and then stretch it out. And you can see as I'm starting to glide a little bit, so this is like a pin and glide technique. And I'm gonna take this technique all the way up, real good sports massage technique, all the way up to the to the uh, ischial tuberosity there. And as I get all the way up to the ischial tuberosity, once, once, once I do it slow, you can saw that I did it slow. I did, you know, section, section, section. And now I can kind of just do the whole length of the muscle here. I'm gonna get right up to the glute and I'm just gonna make like a little lever here. And I'm gonna press right in, basically right around the greater trochanter. I'm gonna start with her leg um, turned outward external rotation of the hip and I'm just going to press in with the fist here into the glute and I'm going to turn it out and this is going to be a pin and stretch on our glutes and you can do this one through the sheet and honestly this one's so good that I mean this this could be the you know bulk of your glute work this could be the only one that your client might even really want or the only one you really do on your clients just gets that movement in there it gets that uh, compression in there and just uh, it's just really nice, really, really good technique. So now I can come into that deeper stretch for her, her quads. So again, if, if, if they have more availability to do this, um, then we can get a little deeper. Now this next stretch is something technically different. Even if, even if they were still getting a good stretch and their leg was here and they were still feeling good stretch in their quads, by taking the, the, the ankle and putting my, my knee on the table, I can lift her leg. I'm just gonna put her knee on top of my knee. Now I'm gonna grab the edges of my drape and I'm gonna pull that drape tighter for her just so she feels a little more comfortable. And then I can bend the knee again. So not only are we getting the quads with a deeper stretch, we're actually bringing it into the hip flexors. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stabilize her hip here. So I'm gonna hold right here at the low back and the hip. And I just kind of give it this little, a very gentle press down, which is really gonna isolate into the, the hip flexors here. And don't rule it out that just minor movements add so much more depth to your stretch. If I just take her foot and I curl her toes, it's going to really increase what she feels here, right? She's already nodding like, Ooh, yeah, that changed it up. And I can just hold here for a moment real easy. Now I always say that you want to incorporate stretches slowly, use this more simple stretches with clients until they come become very comfortable with you because some stretches just could weird clients out. So another, pretty easy common stretch I like to do is right here from this position, I'm gonna grab the inside of her knee here and I'm gonna hold this drape tight. I'm gonna come right through, see how I'm getting this, um, this uh, lateral motion here, this external movement of her hip. And I'm gonna bring her thigh into this uh, abduction, right? And now this gives me different access to work the glutes even and I'm getting a stretch. You see, I like to pull the, the drape down so she feels nice and comfortable there. Gets me a, a real different angle to hit the, 
uh, glutes here, and I can even give a light press and stretch those adductors. Now, she seems like she can get a little more movement, so what I can do is I can just gently push. Yeah, there we go. Gently push her thigh in a little bit more and just get that deeper stretch in there. Now, when I want to come out, I'm going to grab her thigh or uh, grab her knee here. I'm just going to slowly just start coming out the way we did. And I'm going to lift her thigh and just follow the, the rotation of her hip here. Another stretch we're going to do, I'm just going to put the drape back up so it came undone here. So I'm going to take her legs slightly off to the side of the table. And I'm just going to press my knee or thigh onto her foot. And I'm going to put her foot into dorsal flexion, which is going to stretch out those, um, mostly the gastric nemius of the uh, ham, or uh, excuse me, the calves here. And I can just apply a little bit of pressure to get that technique. I'm just going to add in with that stretch. Take the leg up to the table here. And we're going to incorporate the entire leg with some glides. I can come all the way up. I'm just being very gentle when I pass over the knee. So I'll put some pressure here, lighten up my pressure, skip over the knee, put my pressure back in, and just continue up. And I can do this with my palms. I can do this with my fists. I can do this with my forearms. I can, you know, just take it, take it all the way here. And I could take the technique both up and down. And we're going to end with a little bit of footwork here. So I'm going to bend the foot again. And that same little, little love heart technique we did, again, I'm going to get those curled fingers and I'm just going to strip. I'm going to get a little bit of lotion. And just strip right there. You should see her knee lift off the table a little bit when I get this pull. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab at the like right next to the heel with those curled fingers. And I'm going to lift my hands up, which lifts her leg up. And then her weight is going to let her foot pull down for this technique. Another technique I like to do for the foot while it's elevated like this is to just wring it out like a sponge. So I'm going to keep my hand nice and flat right here across her, her toes because I don't want to crush her foot and try to do that. It's going to feel real uncomfortable. I like her foot to be flat and then just rotate it. Just keep that foot flat and just get that rotation in there. Our, shoe, our, our, our feet are kept and cramped in shoes all day, right? Especially if they, you wear heels, like, ugh, that's terrible for your feet. So just, just incorporating movement into the feet is amazing. Uh, and with that in mind, with that movement, what I can do is I can just pinch each knuckle, each uh, metatarsal phalangeal joint, and just kind of give it a little shimmy, shimmy shake. And I'll just do that for each set of knuckles and just incorporate that movement, right? Movement is, is the key here. I'm gonna place the foot onto the uh, table again. And I'm gonna start with the praying hand petrissage right here on the heel. So again, that praying hand petrissage we just did. I can do a nice little scrub technique. Generates nice heat right here on the heel. And then with that heat in my hands, I'll just spread it right up the calf. And, and notice, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm literally right here on the edge of the table. You know, the table's actually pretty high for me. So normally I could, I could still be sitting on the edge of the table for this. Then I'm going to pick up her foot and I'm going to do forearm glides because I want to really take out a lot of the work from my hands and my fingers for the foot area. And I'm just going to just come straight across right here around the, uh, the knuckles, straight across through the center of the foot and right up through the heel. Stand up, and I'm just going to take my fist, and I'm just going to slide right down. And I can even do a little shingle here, just, just, just sliding down on that foot. So usually my, my finisher is traction. So I'm just going to hold her leg, and I'm just going to pull on that hip. And you can see as I pull, her leg's actually starting to straighten out. So as I'm pulling, I can grab for that thigh and I'll just pull that drape over and just merge as seamlessly into covering up her thigh. 
and then boom, I'm right on the other side to repeat what I did. So that's our basic uh, leg routine. So go ahead and try it out and let me know what you think.